Hello learners, today I am here to discuss module 7, lesson 17 and the chapter name is production function. In this chapter, uh, we are going to learn various concepts like concept of production, production function along with the factors of production, concept of short run, long run in the production function and the concept of total product, average product and the marginal product. So, uh, we will continue with the meaning of the production that is the base of the chapter. The production may be defined as a process through which a form transforms inputs into output. It is the process of creating goods and services with the help of factors of production or various inputs. We have one more meaning of the production. It is a process of workers combining various material inputs and immaterial inputs like plants, know-how in the order to make something for the consumption, the output. It is the act of creating output, a good or services which has value and contributes to the utility of individuals. Now we have discussed in the definition of product that we, when we use inputs to create output. So it is necessary to understand the meaning of inputs. So in the next slide we have the meaning of inputs. What are the inputs? In economics, factor of production or inputs are which is used in the production process to produce output. That is finished goods and services. The utilized amounts of the various inputs determine the quantity of output. According to this relationship is called the production function. So it's very simple to understand the meaning of production function like when we put some input in order to get some output. It is all about the production function. We can see the picture of the, there are four factors of production. The one is land, another is labor, capital and entrepreneurship. We can see the picture of all the four factors of production which are very relevant for the any kind of production process which is used by the every producer to have some output. Now we will discuss each and every factor of production in detail. So the very first FOP is land. In economics, land comprises all naturally occurring resources as well as geographical land which is considered as an important part of input to create output. In this picture we can see that uh, there are two pieces of land. On the one piece of land there are some fields and on the another piece of land there is a factory. Without the land, without this factor of production, it is impossible to have any kind of output. In agriculture sector, a farmer needs land and in the manufacturing sector, so many producers need some plants or factories to produce various kinds of goods and services for the consumption. The another factor of production is labor. Labor is an important factor of production. It is described as any human work which is performed with the help of mind or physique with a view to earn income. Labor is the source of his own labor power. It is inseparable from labor himself. Again, we have a picture of uh, the second factor of production that is labor. The so many laborers are there in our country. We live in India that is a labor abundant country. We have various small scale industries in which the production is done mainly by the labor intensive technology. But in the manufacturing sector, labor also plays a vital role because to perform the functions on machines in various plants, we do not produce anything without the help of labor. The third factor of production is capital. Capital is an important factor of production also. It consists of those goods which are produced by the economic system and are used as inputs in the production of further goods and services. Capital may be physical or tangible or intangible. In this slide we can see the various examples of capital. Like in the first we have the money which we invest in our business. And the second we have some machinery or building and some loose tools we also have. These all comprises capital. Capital is a combination of various assets, loose tools which we used for the production process in every business. 
the capital might be of a small amount if we working in a small scale industries and the capital may be of large amount if we work in a manufacturing sector so it depends that how much capital we need to produce goods and services the very fourth factor of production is entrepreneurship an entrepreneur is a person who combines the other factor of production like land labor and capital to earn a profit the most successful entrepreneurs are innovators who find new ways to produce goods and services or who develop new goods and services that he brings to the market without the entrepreneur combining land labor and capital in a new ways many of the innovations we see around us or around the world would not exist so it is a person or entrepreneur who combines all the various factor of production to create so many kind of innovations which we see around us in our daily life we can see the picture of an entrepreneur who is having the capital land and labor and with the availability of all such things by organizing all such things he can create any kind of output which he wants to create for the public for the satisfaction of the public uh we have a picture in this slide in which we can see that how inputs converts into output with the help of some process like uh, we have some inputs raw material machineries and labors when we put all such things into some kind of process that is being manually or mechanically any of them and when we use such kind of process we definitely get some output in a form of some finished goods or we can say some services so to get any kind of output or any kind of service we must need some kind of inputs and along with some basic process now there are some important concepts in the production function which is a very important to understand there are three concepts the very first is on the basis of time that is a short run and long run the second concept is on the basis of the factor that may be a fixed factor or maybe a variable factor and the very third one is the level of production and the scale of production which is definitely influenced by the rest of the two factors uh, so the very first factor that is short run and long run short run refers to a time period in which a firm does not have sufficient time to increase the scale of output it in increase only the level of output by increasing the quantity of a variable factor and making intensive use of the existing fixed factors in the short run only one factor will be a variable and another will be the fixed because we are talking about a very short time period so the all factors of production cannot vary in the same proportion we can only increase the one factor and other will remain fixed as they will change in the long run so here we have the meaning of long run which refers to the time period in which the firms can increase the scale of output by increasing the quantity of all the factor inputs simultaneously and in the same proportion in the long run all the factors are variable as an entrepreneur has sufficient time to employ more labor and land also so in this slide we are talking about long run what is long run when there is a no limit of time period a producer can employ any amount of land and any amount of machinery or capital to increase the scale of production so in this slide we can understand the equation of short run and long run short run we can say the q is equal to f of l here the q defines quantity f stands for function and l stands for labor in the short run we can increase the quantity by the function of labor only with the fixed factor of land or capital it means we can increase the output in short run only by the employment of labor more and more labor with the availability of fixed land or fixed capital but in the long run here we have the equation that is q is equal to f of k and l here k denotes capital but in the long run we can increase output by the function of capital and labor both because 
it is the long run and we can increase the amount of capital as well as labor to increase the as much level of output that we want. The next concept in the production function is fixed and variable factor. Fixed factors are those factors of production whose quantity cannot be changed with the change in level of output. For example, the quantity of land and machinery. We all know that we have to arrange too much capital if we want to buy a new piece of land or if we want to buy a new machinery. So that's why all these factors are termed as fixed factors, which cannot increase in the short run. Variable factors are those factors of production whose quantity can easily be changed with the change in level of output, for example, labor. We have already discussed the term labor that is a variable factor, termed as a variable factor because I have already taken an example of the India that is a labor abundant country. We can have more and more labor in a short term if we want to increase the level of production. But if we want to increase the scale of production, it is possible only when uh, we will be able to change the fixed factor also that is possible only in the long run. The very third concept in the production function is the level and the scale of production. When any firm increases production by increasing the quantity of one factor input, whereas the quantity of other factor inputs remain constant, it increases the level of production only. But if the firm increases the production by increasing the quantity of all the factor of production simultaneously and in the same proportion, it will definitely increase the scale of production. So we have understood the level of production relates to the short run, whereas the scale of production definitely relates to the long run. Now we will discuss the meaning of production function which is a very important for the exam point of view also. So it is important to understand this function and the meaning of the function that is the production function refers to the physical relationship between or we can say technical relationship between inputs and outputs under the given technology. It is a mathematical or functional relationship between inputs and output such that with a given combination of factor inputs and technology at a given period of time, the maximum output can be produced. If there are two factor inputs, now we are understanding the production function with the help of some equation. Like if we have two factor inputs, suppose labor and capital, we will denote labor by letter L and capital by letter K then production function can be written as the Qx is equal to F of L and K. The Q stands for quantity of X commodity, F stands for function and L I have told you labor and K is a capital as well. So we can have any amount of output by employing these two factor inputs, but it totally depends upon the time concept. If we have the long run, we can increase both of the factor of inputs. But if we have short run, we can only increase the labor and the capital will remain constant. Here we have uh, the picture that is showing us the when we put some inputs and it is being processed in the factory, we will definitely get some output. The inputs we have discussed that land, labor, capital and entrepreneurship and the output totally depends that what kind of inputs we are putting in the process we will get those kind of output like cars, furniture, food, computer. So we can have durable goods, perishable goods, any kind of goods that totally depends upon the production process along with the choice of inputs. Here we have uh, the one more picture which is defining the same thing. So now the time concept in the production which is that is uh, divided into two parts that is the long run production function and the short run production function. The short run production function defines where the sum of inputs cannot be varied because there is not enough time. For example, for an employer it is easier to add new labor than new equipment. 
because labor is an input factor that can be varied which impacts the production. But on the other hand, in the long run, there is enough time in this period of the production for the managers to vary all the inputs used to make a product, not just labor. For example, new equipment and labor can be added to existing setup to boost the production. Now, there are the three important concepts that uh, is very important to understand if we want to understand the short run production function in detail and these three terms are the basic of the laws. Uh, now there are very important three concepts of production uh, that is the total product, average product and marginal product which are the basics to understand the laws of the short run and the long run as well. So, these three concepts are very important to understand. Now, we will discuss all of the three in detail one by one. The very first is total product, we can say TP. TP is the total amount of commodity that is produced with the given level of factor inputs and technology during a given period of time. For example, two units of labor combined with two units of capital can produce for example 26 units fans per day. So here 26 fans is the total product which is produced with the given level of inputs. So TP is the total product which is produced in a given period of time with the help of various factor inputs is known as total product. Average product is the second concept of production function which is defined is the output produced per unit of input employed. It can be obtained by dividing TP by the number of units of variable inputs. So we can have the formula of average product that is when we divide the total product by the number of units of labor. So we will get the average product. Here we have an example like if we have 10 workers who are making 30 chairs per day and we want to calculate the AP of worker per day. It will be when we divide the 30 divide, uh, by 10, we will get the 3 chairs per labor. What it shows that each labor is producing 3 chairs. So by computing or by putting all the values in the formula, we will be able to compute the value of average product. The third concept is marginal product. We can say MP. Margin means change in total product. So MP of an input is the additional output that can be produced by employing one more unit of that input while keeping other inputs constant. For example, if 10 tailors can make 50 shirts per day and the 11 tailors can make 54 shirts per day and we want to compute the MP of a single tailor. So what we will do, we will subtract the last nth unit by the previous units of n like the 11th worker will be if we subtract the 50 uh, from the 54 we will get 4 shirts per day. So marginal product shows the change or the addition done by the last unit of the worker to the total product. So we can quickly recap all such concepts we have read. The production is the process of converting input into output and the production function shows the technical or mechanical or mathematical relationship between input and output. The fixed factor are those factors which cannot vary with the change in the level of output because of the time concept and the variable factors are those which can be changed with the change in the level of output because uh, in the short run labor is a variable factor and that can vary with the change in the level of output. And we read these three concepts also. So the TP is can be defined as the total output that is produced in a given time with the given inputs and technology. AP is the output per unit of input and the MP is addition to the total product by the employment of an additional unit of input. So thank you learners. I hope you understood all the concepts which I told you.